This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoltenberg, Camp Power, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now sitting in the Volkswagen E-Golf from 2014. This is a nine-year-old car I borrowed from Elbil Mac. I know when I did the degradation test, I was cruising at 90 kilometers per hour. It wasn't that cold. Now it is freaking cold. And I want to know something. You know, the reason why I cruise at 90 kilometers per hour, this has something to do with battery theory. Oh, actually, the way battery works is that if you have too high discharge rate, too high C rating, uh, you will have more losses because of the result of internal resistance, yeah, whatever, right? So since it's cold now, I just want to know, and since I just finished charging, I did the charging test and I have 100% battery, I want to know how high is, are the losses when you hammer it? Well, let's find out. So yeah, it's a bit weird setup. I have a heater here running at 750 watts. I have EcoFlow in the back there. This is this, <laughs> the setup when I, when I do charging tests because it's freaking cold outside and uh, I don't want to suffer, but I also don't want to interfere with the charging, with pulling heat. Well, actually, fun fact, the Eagles, when you're charging, uh, wait, wait, how is this? Yeah, when you're DC charging, yeah, you will get heat in the cabin, but if you're AC charging, there is no heat in the cabin, which is a bit weird, man. But, you know, maybe Volkswagen, they were not too serious about designing good, electric cars uh, nine years ago but at least the, the newer Volkswagen they're way better today but okay let's um, show you guys this is why I have to okay I, I, I don't want to run any uh, stuff that pulls power you see that once we fire up the car now uh, when people should turn off the lights here we are pulling 350 watts so it shows us 96% here but that's 100% on uh, the main real state of charge so uh, we will just reset some stuff and then start hammering it are we on the move? So we're trying to hammer it uh, fast. Yeah, it's uh, oh wait, it's not minus eight. It's supposed to be minus twelve or more. Yeah, seems like the yeah, it's not it's not updated yet, so it's going to update. But yeah, so I'll go schnell, uh, drive a distance, and then we turn around and try to get back to Ayunti. Actually, or anywhere really. All right, we're on the way back now. That was a quick sprint. We have 23 kilometers of range left, and you see that it's minus 11.5 degrees over here. Consumption right now is 297 watt hour per kilometer. <laughs> okay, um, let's drive a little bit more and I have to try to go as deep as possible. Oh, this is it. Um, we are now have seven uh, kilometers of range left and we are enforced to use the eco, uh, what is it called again? Well, eco mode. Okay, it's not the eco plus yet. Okay, we can go even deeper. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, uh, we're getting low now. I don't know how low, five kilometers. It doesn't show me how many percent. And then this one is not correct. So yeah, the heater is off. We are now in the Eco Plus mode. No heater. And it's, shit, it's minus 15.5 degrees outside. <laughs> Fortunately, I have this heater and I have EcoFlow behind me. Man, yeah. So we are not suffering yet. Just have to get over to the fast charger. But so first I thought about going home and I was like, no, 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 I can't go home because I don't see percent state of charge there. But once we go to fast charger, the fast charger will report uh, percent. We need that to calculate everything. So let's see now, we're getting close to, oops, there should be a fast charger here. We have five kilometers left. All right, here we have the stat, 60 kilometers. I don't know the decimal. 277 watt hour per kilometer. Yeah, this car, I believe, doesn't have heat pump. So yeah, and then we had to find out how many percent is, well, this, let's plug it in. Oh, whoa, <laughs> shit, we had 6% left. Huh, what, 6%. So when it says 6% there, it was, yeah, yeah see here, 13.6 here is 6%. Okay, now I know. Wait, what the heck? Uh, charging started and then it stopped and now it started again. Uh, okay, well, at least we're charging now. I need juice just to get back home. Wait. Why is the charging so slow? I'm so get. I'm supposed to... Look, 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 look. Wait, wait. These Delta chargers, do they have problems? In, well, you see, now it says... Huh? What? Shit. Do they have problems in minus 16 degrees Celsius? Okay, let's try another charger. Okay, I didn't bother moving the car. I just plug in on this side instead. Let me see. 
Wait, it seems to have the same behavior. Well, or maybe that other side was kaput. At least it's charging. What do you see? Uh, okay, wait. Go on, well, let's see 40 kilowatt hour per hour. Uh, yeah, this seems more normal. It has this slow ramp up. Then it's supposed to get 40 kilowatt. Okay, well, okay, so one side was kaput then. Yeah, uh, this happens from time to time. But in uh, what I've seen most of the time is that the delta chargers are quite reliable. So that was just a hiccup. Wait, I did the math and based on the test now, uh, we still get 17.7 .7 kilowatt hour. What the heck? Maybe the degradation test I did initially, uh, the battery was colder, but now the battery is nice and warm. So we actually get more energy out of this, despite that we hammered it. Yeah, that could be it, because I think also, yeah, another part of the battery, lithium battery theory is that um, internal resistance um, is higher when the battery is colder. So yeah, that, this is why, for example, Tesla, you have a heating up procedure for drag racing. So yeah, you get better performance. So, hmm, okay. Well, maybe next time I do degradation test, I should heat up the battery to at least 20, 30 degrees Celsius. But okay, when I actually do that, I try to, uh, every time I do a degradation test, I will at least try to heat up to, let's say, 15, 20 degrees Celsius to get some more normal temperatures. But then during the drive, it might drop a bit. But yeah, wow, this is actually similar to what I experienced before is that the E-Golf battery seems to have good chemistry. Maybe they put enough cobalt in here so that you get um, a low internal resistance. So, okay, it doesn't have thermal management, but at least uh, it doesn't heat up that much when you drive. Because if you have significant losses, which we didn't measure here, that means that it will heat up more and then it replicates. For example, leaf probably has more internal resistance. That's what I've also been experiencing over many years. And then what else is it? Yeah, also the cobalt might have some other um, uh, en enhancements or whatever you should call it. It's, it's like, it's like st uh, steroids for batteries. Cobalt also allows the battery to charge faster when it's colder. Uh, also, I can show you that um, normally many batteries, they require 25 degrees Celsius to get maximum speed. But I've seen in the e battery that even at 10 degrees Celsius, you get the maximum speed, which is 40 kilowatt. It's not that fast, but it's a small battery. So this was interesting, um, but um, I'm not done yet. I want, also want to see the whole uh, um, uh, heat loss, because normally there will be some measurable, measurable heat loss when you hammer it versus slow speed. And I want to try now a Volvo XC40, the new one with the 82 kilowatt hour battery. All right, now it's a new day, and then I prepared the Volvo XC40. This is the new with the new motor, the bigger 82 kilowatt hour battery. It can now disengage the front motor. Normally I would do a regular range test, but it's so cold now that uh, uh, we would just get low range because of that. But we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna do 120 and 90 test, but we'll do a full test this time. So yeah, um, I have now tried to I put the heater under the car to uh, try to heat up the battery. So at least when we get in here, we don't see any, um, we don't see the, the snow crystal on the battery. So it shouldn't be cold. We charge it 100%, HVAC uh, is off right now. So we'll just drive the same route. Now, let's do 120 then. All right, we're on the move. I was gonna do a 120 test and then this happens. Yeah, Norwegian left lane huggers, uh, poor lane discipline or lack of lane discipline. Okay, I'll compensate by going a little bit faster once we clear up this. And then how is Mjöss all the day? Oh, okay, wait, do we have tailwind? Oh, very little wind. Yeah, at least that's good uh, because the <laughs> poor aerodynamics of this car is 0.329. Yeah, roughly 0.33 from what I remember. Yeah, it's quite high, so we don't want too much wind to mess up this uh, consumption. We are passing by Hama, and over here it's minus 13 degrees Celsius. But despite that low temperature, I'm surprised that the consumption is only 300 watt hour per kilometer. Wow! Okay, so it's not 350 <laughs> like uh, during 1000 kilometer challenge, but there we draw faster. We are now at the one hour mark, and you see that we have done 112 kilometers only but uh, the average speed is 115. So it's been a bug since day one that 
the average speed uh, shows three kilometers per hour too high. Well, I guess it depends what speed it is, but yeah. So they still haven't fixed this bug after so many years. Same bugs applies to Polestar 2 also. Wow, it's so beautiful here at Stange. It's always this area uh, that has all this snow on the in the trees. Man, nice. And also the sun, of course, today. Wow, this is quite enjoyable. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. I feel like we're in Lapland. Well, we're now at Delo de Luca and uh, yeah, we have 20% left. If you look at the trip meter here, um, okay, according to Google, we drove 208 kilometers and then it reported at 206, so we have 0.7% under reporting. I'm going to correct for that. Consumption was 302 watt hour per kilometer. Okay, not too bad. Wait, 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 wait a minute. 304. Yeah, this is the one I reset. I went out of the home before, so. But okay, we'll look at the numbers afterwards. We have to drive it down to almost zero now. Okay, see, this is why the last part of the test now will be ruined by slow drivers. Yeah, uh, going only 100 kilometers per hour in the 110 zone. Well, actually more like 95 uh, GPS speed. Um, one strange thing for this whole test is that auto steer hasn't been working. You see, you can do this and you get the car symbol and then you click again and it's supposed to be a, a a steering wheel symbol that is yellow, so I don't know what's up with auto steer, man. It's not working. It's kaput. All right, we are done with the test. We are now at the supercharger, Gardermoen. So I did navigate to plantation here, not to the supercharger, because I want to see what happens if we don't preheat uh, on purpose. So uh, yeah, okay, we have some power limit. As you can see here, there's an arc there. Uh, cars kind of show some information, but it's not very useful, but at least here you can see that uh, discharge power limit is 234 or something, okay? So, and then I'm not sure if this number here uh, is correct, uh, charge power limit, yeah. So, okay, let's plug in and see if we can get 200 kilowatt or not. But okay, wait, 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 wait. before we do that, also the test now for testing energy, we have to look at this, these numbers here versus 5% and then I'll calculate the kilowatt hour. So in Polestar 2 with the same battery, we're supposed to get um, no, 79.1 kilowatt hour. Okay, let's see then. All right, ooh, ooh, 170 kilowatt. Ooh, oh, come on, come on, 200, come on, 200. 200. 88. Wow, we that didn't preheat, but we hammered it. And then this is what happened. Wait, oh, you know, I should try when we do the 90 test, uh, probably tonight. And then we see if we also get this kind of speed or not. Okay, now it's not dropping. Yeah, this is like Tesla charging speed. You get 250 kilo and then it drops. But this, it seems to maintain 185 for a bit, right? Wow, okay, not too bad. But based on the distance here, multiply the consumption, and then you have to divide it by 0.95 because we are arrive at 5%. That means only 77.3 kilowatt hour. Really? Uh, did we actually have 1.9 kilowatt, no, 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 1.8 kilowatt hour loss? Okay, uh, let's uh, go back home and then I have to prepare for the next test. But what is it? Let's see, it's over here. Now, uh, after a little while, yeah, okay. Goes a little bit up and down, this 107. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, which one is correct? Because here it claims to be 160 only. Huh? Uh, you know, I've seen this before that uh, the number here is a bit misreported or maybe it's uh, it's lagged, but let's see. Let's see what happens in the Tesla app. Okay, 170. There. 176, 178, okay. Car scanner reports 174. Okay. Oh, but it's still very impressive speed, nonetheless. Wait, look at that. That one hot drops 160 now. Huh? Uh, well, Tes oh, Tesla app is a bit slow. Yeah, there you go. Now Tesla apps comes. Uh, okay. And then car scanner is on there. Okay, yeah. Wait, wait. Wait, are we supposed to throttle now already? What happened to the 200 kilowatt? hour per hour all right we are now in the garage and we charge the car to 100 again it's now night and we're gonna go wait let me see just here same route uh, but just a little bit slower and then at least now we will measure the 90 test done 
Okay, we're on the moon now. So, um, yeah, over here is minus 10 degrees Celsius. And hey, we have auto stair working now. Hmm, strange. Okay, well, or whatever it's called again, pilot assist. Uh, they have different names. Um, LFA, LKA, LCC activated. <laughs> Okay, but um, yeah, first now we're going to drive to uh, Dahl and then we do a little uh, 90 loop. But right now we are not too strict about speed, but at least now I don't want to hammer too hard. But I also don't want to drive 90 all the way because that's going to take uh, too long, especially yeah, with the new battery now. Wow, I just noticed the gear shifter is illuminated. <laughs> do you like my illuminated shaft? Oh yeah, it's kind of short but thick. All right, we are now at Ionte. Okay, so here is the starting point for the test, 90 test. So I will now reset TM trip manual and then off we go. Oh yeah, this area is lit now. Yeah, but uh, wait, what the heck, man? But the auto stair is not lit. Uh, is it not working again? What the heck, man? No, there, 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 there. Okay, uh, all right. We are now at Brumendal. I'm gonna turn around here. So, you know, this new drivetrain has uh, a, a mix of induction motor and uh, permanent magnet motor. The previous uh, variant was PM motor and you had to then have all-wheel drive permanently. So, um, uh, now with the mix, you can then switch off one motor and then the way it's been configured is that the rear motor is the uh, permanent magnet and the front motor is induction actually similar to Tesla and then that means that they also change the way the car behaves slightly let me see it's slippery here so if I give it the beans I can make it oversteer which, which makes it quite fun <laughs> so but in most of the time you, you it doesn't oversteer left and right so you see here okay uh, well the car is a bit heavy and we have studless winter tires Ooh, slippery, slippery, going sideways, going sideways. <laughs> yeah, but it's quite easy to control the car. You see now going sideways. Uh, just, yeah, oh. Whoa, it's it's struggling to get traction here. <laughs> I'm flooring it. Almost nothing happens. Yeah. But it's um it's quite fun to drive and also uh quite powerful, quite punchy. I like it. It sits somewhere between um, a Model Y, I mean power-wise or speed-wise. It's faster than the Model Y long range, but uh, not as fast as Model Y performance. So it sits in between the somewhere. We're back at Sugar K, down now, and uh, the consumption, what, no, no, shit. It was 246 watt hour per kilometer, but it counts when we're stationary. Wow, that is high, but it's minus 10 over here at least. It was minus four at Mjosa. So, right, um, now I need to drive it down to almost zero, but, uh, man, okay, I'm gonna show you something here. Uh, let me open E, let's see if it's easy to open. Okay, okay, let me see. I recommend E if you want to uh, check the weather in Norway. Wait, 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 shit. Man, come on, come on. There, there, there. So, look here, if we go to forecast, can it adjust, it's always a bit right. This is very accurate. It says that it will snow. Well, it starts snowing soon. And if we go to the map here, you see that. There. <clears throat> this is also quite accurate data. The snowstorm is coming. Shit. Okay, new round. This time I cruised 105 on the speed, which is roughly 102 GPS speed. So we're not hammering it too hard. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll reach uh, Rudshögda or not, we'll see. But, um, yeah, it's still minus 10 outside, and then I don't see battery temperature. I haven't found battery temperature. This is car scanning, by the way. The, one of the most qu common questions I get uh, from you guys is that, hey, what, what app is it, is it that you're using? What app? But well, this is called car scanner. Um, and there are different profiles for each car uh, and then the guy who made them he tries to figure out the, the variables but at least for Volvo I haven't seen any uh, battery temperature value but at least there is something here called um, well it's battery coolant inlet 
So it could be an indication of the budget temperature that we might have 21 degrees, but when we are fast charging, then the coolant will drop because it's cooling. Or if you try to heat up the battery, then the coolant will be higher, yeah. It's 2.30 at night now, and uh, okay, what I said about you might be wrong for today. <laughs> it might not be that accurate. It's supposed to be snowy by now, but it's not, so yeah, I'm not complaining. Yeah, so we now have 19% left, so yeah. Um, consumption, by the way, I've been cruising at 102 kilometers per hour. Uh, it's 273, okay, so it was, uh, I think it was minus 12 at the coldest, now it's only minus 5. So yeah, uh, we will uh, go to Cleavage, that's my plan. Oh, 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 look at this. Um, I have the, the matrix light on, and normally the matrix will be working, but it seems like now on the motorway it's only doing the on and off, you see? Yeah, hmm, okay. And you know, this car is equipped with uh, Harman Kardon speakers, and they sound really good. I've been enjoying some uh, nice uh, Spotify uh, here. So, you see, call me old-fashioned, but okay, I'm a, I'm a Taylor Swift fan, but I love the old Taylor Swift albums. So, uh, my favorite is Fearless, and also, I think the best Taylor Swift song, uh, maybe not that well-known, is The Best Day. Oh yeah, let's play it. Oh, let's enjoy it. We are now at Cleavage Supercharger and Neo Swap Station and uh, Burger King. Well, the test is done. So we see, no, no, shit, no, come back, come back, come back, come back. Yeah, yeah, okay, so. Um, interesting. If we look at the distance here multiplied by the consumption, and then we have 5% left, we end up with 77.3 kilowatt hour, just like the previous test. Very consistent test, but the consumption was higher. The previous test it was 300, uh, wasn't it? Something. But um, yeah, so it uh, seems like uh, if you hammer it or you go slower, you still get the same energy out. Uh, so yeah, okay. Uh, but I wonder why we don't get uh, 79 kilowatt hour. Yeah, some people say, yeah, well, it's because it's winter. No, I'm not buying it because, okay, you know, yeah, it's winter outside, but uh, the battery doesn't care how cold it is outside. What it cares about is the battery temperature and the battery seems to be at 23.5. That's what matters. But okay, let's uh, plug it in. So. Uh, this time also, you know, I navigated to Burger King. I did not navigate to the supercharger. So you're going to see how fast they we charge this time then. Okay, it's ramping up. 126, 130, oh, 140, oh. Wait, can we get 185 like we got last time? Yeah, look at that, huh? Preheating is overrated. <laughs> No, but I suspect that this car might feed the battery with leftover heat from the motors. Yeah, it probably has some kind of alien technology, some heat scavenging. Maybe not octaval, but maybe five valve or six valve or something. Um, wait. Uh, it doesn't seem to hit 180 plus kilowatt. Okay, yeah, so, okay, okay. Well, so yeah, if I re uh, navigate to the fast charger, it will probably then be warmer and then we get 200 kilowatt hour per hour. Oh shit, oh, you see? Yeah, previously uh, when we hammered it, uh, the battery was warmer, I believe, and we could at least maintain a slightly flat, flat the curve. I was getting 180 kilowatt for a while, but here only 142. Yeah, and also, by the way, in, ca in case you guys are wondering, uh, these are V3 superchargers, and I can park just like a Tesla because the charge port is on the left side with the right side, not the right side with the wrong side. <laughs> oh, look here. The coolant inlet temperature is going up now. Yeah, this indicates that uh, the car is trying to heat up the battery. And also another thing, you see that um, we are taking uh, what seems to be what from the charger, 140 kilowatt from the charger, but only 134 goes into the battery. So that's, uh, I don't know, eight kilowatt uh, battery heater roughly. And okay, we are also heating up the cabin. Wow, oh, 040, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's heating up the battery at least. Okay, anyway, based on the result today, it could seem like maybe 
uh, the car is more efficient now, but it's hard to tell because the previous result with the all uh, the all wheel drive or the permanent all wheel drive with the old drive train that was uh, warmer, but it was wet. But at least the the 120 test previously was quite high versus today. But then today, okay, we were stuck behind some left lane huggers, but I also tried to compensate by going slightly faster when I was not uh, blocked. So. I think it still should be a good res uh, good result, right? So yeah, um, maybe if I have time or if it's interesting, I could try this in spring or at least when it's not so cold outside. But um, it's hard to wait for it because nowadays it's actually cold for a long time. So this is what we got right now. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.